Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Mills, Kicks and Collectibles. Got a Mandalorian themed episode today. So, if you haven't seen any of the episodes and you don't want any spoilers, probably don't watch this video because we got spoilers from episodes three and four. So, you're warned. All right, let's get right into it. So, the first thing we have today is the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. Now, let's take a closer look at the box. So we've got some pretty standard Black Series packaging here. You can see the heavy Mando through the box there. D2 on the side, so the numbering is slightly different from regular Black Series stuff. And if you want to take a look at his little bio on the back, pause it right now, take a read. Nothing on the side. All right, let's crack him open. So let's just take a look at the accessories he comes with. So this is his jetpack slash minigun blaster. Um, any of you that have seen episode three, this is pretty iconic. And, you know, he was giving the old Mando a rough time um, when he was trading his Beskar and getting it smelted into his chest plate. Um, probably my favorite character out that episode was this guy. So very happy to see him in a Black Series six inch figure. Hot Toys one is coming out as well. So that's going to be pretty awesome. So let's just take a closer look at the jetpack. So not not similar to what we usually see with Mandalorians. We kind of always see the iconic Boba Fett silhouette when we're talking about jetpacks. So this is pretty cool. This I'm guessing will pour it into there. You've got some nice weathering actually on, on this part here. This is kind of cool. Yeah, Bevel the inside of those. That's nice. Even this is sculpted really nicely. Uh, really like that gunmetal gray that dark gray that they've used for this and just the sculpting on here is pretty amazing i don't have any pictures to accurately to you know compare it but this is all pretty good i love this blue paint that they've used it's like metallic blue paint at the tip to obviously emphasize the the old carbon scoring i guess from when it's been fired and you've got the gradient where it's really shiny but let me see if I can get a better close-up sell everything into that dark gray of the actual molded plastic so this is the actual color of the plastic and then they've just painted this but that looks awesome so this is rotatable so I'm guessing you can get your figure to, to hold it from there I'm not entirely sure what this part is but this is very nice very pleased with this. So let's take a look at the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian himself. Uh, you've got the Mythos head on the side on his left pauldron, or pauldron shoulder. Yeah, sculpting is really nice so far. I always wanted to know if this would come out, but no, doesn't. This unfortunately doesn't come out and you can't change his viewfinder. But the head sculpt, quite impressed actually pretty accurate it's nice to see some different colors used on mandalorians i mean look i'm pretty much just set on boba fett and Django fett's color scheme so it's nice to see this this blue this deep blue and then you've got you know the best scar showing through where the paint's been chipped off sculpting on his belt is pretty cool pouches little gold details on the button this is really well done uh, black black series is getting really freaking good i mean some of the stuff is hit and miss but hey i'm seriously impressed with this nice little battle damage and again the best scar showing through yeah very cool so this is obviously where um this will pour it in so that's cool got his little butt cape but you know what it actually looks like it could have been leather obviously it's not you got a little bit of weathering on there some damage Going down to his feet, he's got different armor on each of his shins. The knee plates are slightly different as well. Pretty cool. Love the weathering and the detail on this. It's really nice. Uh, I love, do you know what? This is pretty cool. I love how square his feet are. I, I don't know why that looks so cool, but it really does. And again, you've got that blue paint just on there a little more. Best scar showing through. 
and more battle damage. So you know this guy's really put in some work for the guild. And the man that, well, I don't even know if he's part of the guild actually, but he, he's put in some work to help the Mandalorians out. So if we just take a little look at the stuff on his wrist. Now, I'm guessing this must be a flamethrower, but this is way bigger than him. So I don't actually recall this Mandalorian using this in the episode. I mean, I'm not sure if it's a flamethrower. Um, it might be another type of blast or some, maybe a, a sh grenade launcher or something. Um, looks too big to be a flamethrower. On his right arm, just a different color gauntlet. Different color on his hand guard as well. This side is brown. Yeah, I'm loving all the little mismatched browns and teals and dark blues on this figure. Pretty cool. Really like it. Let's move on to the articulation. So, yeah, we've got some... Oh, I like that. I like the fact that they've made this um, quite soft so you can just get the, the, shoulder, the shoulder up there. Got some nice rotation. You can get him into some good poses. That's pretty cool. We've got some articulation up here. That seems very stiff on my figure. Um, the hips rotate really well. Double jointed knees, but they're stiff as hell. Um, so guys, watch out. Don't bust his leg off or nothing. Again, luckily, because this is soft, you can't really get that up there if you want to get him into some kind of running pose. Yep, feet. We don't have ankle pivot. Oh, no, we do. We do. You can make him look like you broke his foot anytime you want. Yeah, this is very cool. I'd actually say right now, this guy, probably my favorite ever Black Series figure. So let's try and get this all ported in. So guessing that goes there. And again, okay, so that is actually specifically molded, if you can see, to slot in. One way and one way only. I guarantee you're not going to be able to do it. Oh yeah, that that gets in there nice and snug. But then the problem with this, oh no, there's no problem. Articulation is not hindered by this. I really was expecting this to be completely hindered. I mean, I'm not even sure if that's the right way, but to be honest, that looks so freaking cool um, that I don't even care. I don't even care. Yeah, this is 100% the best Black Series figure I own right now. This is gone. This is my favorite. 100% this is my favorite. Articulation's pretty good. Whoa, I know. Articulation's pretty good. The poses you can get him into. But I really wish that was a defined trigger because he seems to have a, a trigger holding hand. Now, I can't find trigger on this at all but I'm just gonna go ahead and jam this in there and just pray that it looks cool and it does <laughs> yeah it does very impressed with this guy yeah super awesome now let's move the heavy infantry mando to the side and move on now on to the ATST Raider that we saw in episode Four, where you see the Mando and Baby Yoda go on to planet Sergan and help out some Krill farmers who are getting attacked by some Clatoonian Raiders. All right, now I own a couple of ATSTs, and obviously it's an ATST. It's going to look exactly the same. But cool thing about this, as you can tell from the box, let's get a close up. This has been modified. So after the fall of the Empire, obviously you've got random military vehicles 
up for grabs after the fall. Now, these Clatoonians have clearly got their hands on an ATST and they've gone and painted it and made it look weird. Now, I might go ahead and try and get some red LEDs to put inside here just to make it a little more screen accurate. But anyway, let's get into this and take a look. Okay, so this is what the ATST with the Clatoonian looks like outside of the packaging. Gonna put it all together and I'll be all back. Right. So now we've got the ATSD fully built, and I'm gonna be honest, that was possibly the most frustrating thing I've ever had to do. I mean, with my other ATSD, same scale, original trilogy one. Yeah, problems with making it stand, no exceptions here. But other than that, pretty awesome. So let's take a look at the Clatulian first. Just bring him a bit closer. So you may remember these guys from A New Hope. And what is cool about this is his little helmet and shroud do come off so that's pretty cool um so there's a lot of detail on this clitulian figure brightness of my light is kind of washing these colors out a bit but you've got a nice tan color on his coat same kind of color as we saw on the heavy infantry mando's skirt well, skirt well, you know what i mean little long part nice sculpting on the legs I like the way the material looks like it's bunching up all in all this is you know for its scale it's pretty cool so the sculpted armor pieces look quite cool a couple of little spikes and so forth there nice gunmetal gray again these are soft again maybe you can i think this might be removable you know what i guess if you really really wanted to you could i mean i wouldn't recommend it it is connected to this part here which is definitely not removable but yeah if you wanted to he does come with one accessory other than the atst which this little blaster here so that's you know that's pretty cool nice little detail on this it's pretty good so you can just place that in either hand which is quite cool i'm just gonna stick it in his right there you go He's ready for war. He's ready to go. As far as the articulation goes, pretty standard with the head rotation. Got a little bit of shoulder movement. You can get that going up like that, but not full 90. But then, probably gonna have him pose with the gun anyway. Again, same with the other arm. You got a little bit more rotation actually on this side, which is quite weird. Uh, I don't know why that is. A uh, little bit of movement. Oh, you got no movement in the chest. You've got swivel at the knee. You've also got a single joint. You've got pivot on the feet. That can turn all the way around. Yeah. Again, pretty standard for, for the vintage collection. Let's put his helmet on and get on to what we all came to see, and that is our ATST. Now, actually, one cool thing is when you got these guys standing next to each other, you can really see the scale of how big the ATST is. Let me get a close up for so you. So, let's bring this guy forward and get into some of the details. As we can see by the markings on this ATST, this has been. I would say vandalized by the Clatulians. Um, they've added some war paint to the front of it, made it look a lot more tribal. You've got skull and crossbones, obviously that's an alien skull. And you've got some X marks here. You've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. So I'm thinking maybe this is killed 11, taken out 11 settlements, or it's been used 11 times on a raid, because that's what they use this for against those poor krill farmers now this has got the same level of detail as any of the other vintage collection atsds it's just get onto a side profile let me see if i can move her out so they've gone ahead and painted the left leg red or maybe this is a replacement leg i mean who knows who knows i'm, I'm you just don't know um but again paint works really nice on here we get some nice weathering detail i'll probably go ahead and uh, make that a little darker, make it a little dirtier. And again, with that white patent 
that they've got on the front. They've done again on the side, as you can see as well on the blasters up at the top and around the side of the actual ATST cockpit. So you'll see they've added some soft goods in with this as well. And that's because in the show, our Clatulian friends have adorned this ATST with, I don't know if it's camouflage or if it's their, you know, if it's, I, I don't know, just some cloth. Now, there's a net here, and I guess you could go ahead and throw our friend's helmet in here for storage, but I'm not entirely sure, if I'm honest, why this is here. We didn't see what it was used for in the episode of the Mando, but hey, I actually like the fact that it's there. They could store extra weapons and stuff like that on there. Now, articulation on the ATST, I'm gonna be honest, uh, it's zero. <laughs> and the reason why I say zero is because it took me so long to get it standing that I'm now scared to do anything other than, you know, move the head, which is stiff as hell, and obviously the flaps and, and these guns. So all of these rotate, which is cool. Oh shit, and that falls off. And point that in strong enough. Yeah. But then to be honest with you, look, these aren't like figures that you're gonna wanna mess around with too much. It's a pretty wobbly figure. I actually had to go ahead and tighten some of the bolts. So I got out my trusty small Phillips head screwdriver. Well, I don't know if that's a Phillips head, a little star screwdriver, and I went ahead and tightened up some of these legs. Um, moving on to the right side of the ATSD, this leg's brown. Again, not entirely sure why, but on this side, you can clearly see that they went ahead and painted this. We got more cloth up here. That's probably to protect the joints because they're not gonna get another one. I've just figured it out, but not sure why they didn't do it on this side. Anyway, this may just be dirt. That dirt is over this white stripe here. So I'm not sure why it's dirty red on one and brown on the other, but I guess we will never know. We head to the back of this ATST. Pretty standard. You got some nice weathering detail coming off these vents here at the top. I'll probably go through and darken up these bits a little bit. Because that looks way too shiny for what this ATST has been doing and what it's been going through. Now I, I, I do love this either way. It's an ATST. Can't go wrong. There's a lot of detail in the cockpit as well, which um, I can show you in a second. Probably gonna go ahead and install some red LEDs, which with the amount of space that you have in here, which is a lot of space, you can definitely fit the LEDs in there and um, have that looking pretty sweet. Now, for those who want to see the Clatulian inside, we can indeed go inside. It's a struggle, but he gets in. Yep, and there he is, he's in there. So just close off that hatch. Move you guys up. Oh, okay, I haven't positioned it very well, but you know, his feet are coming out the damn window. <laughs> but he's in there. All, like he's in there. He's definitely in there. Um, I would say this is an awesome figure. If you're, you know, if you're a fan of the Mando, you love ATSTs or whatever it might be, this is a definite must-have pickup. So let's move on to the final of my Mandalorian figures. So last but not least, we have the Mandalorian himself, the star of the show. So this is number 94 in the Black Series. If you wanna read up about him, just go ahead and pause there. And you can read that little part on the back of the box. Nothing on the side, let's break him out. Okay, now that we got the Mandalorian out of his packaging, let's take a closer look at his accessories. So the most exciting thing for me about the Mandalorian series was seeing him with this blaster 
well, this rifle. So this is actually the holiday special rifle where you actually see Boba Fett riding, what I think was a Mythos. So this is actually a modified Amban rifle, which is exactly the same thing that Boba Fett used in the holiday special. So it's not 100% the same, but it's pretty much the same. So we've got some very cool silver paint. We go into some gunmetal on the barrel and you've got the scope, some nice gunmetal again, nice little details on there as well. Yeah, pretty cool. And then you've got this wood stock here with this very pronounced groove in it. Now, that's a delicate piece. Let's move on to his blaster. Now, I don't actually know what the name of this blaster is, but I think we can find out what the real world alternative of this is because as most of you know, most of Star Wars weapons are based on World War II, World War I stuff. Um, and, you know, John Favreau being the amazing director he is and creating possibly the best thing to come out for the Star Wars universe since Return of the Jedi, um, which is one of my favorite films because I genuinely think the new trilogy is trash. But that's a whole nother video and a whole nother story. But this pistol, again, pretty cool. Very nice detail that I'm picking up here. Again, solid gun metal. And then you've got some black for the handle. Yeah, you can see that. So pretty cool. So let's move on to the Mando himself. And yep, a little late to the party. This Mando is the version from like episode one, episode two, before he gets his Beskar or he gets his new Beskar. Now nah, he's pretty dirty. So in my mind, this would definitely be after he's had the run in with the Jawas and they've taken his ship and he has to fight that space rhino. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what it's called, but very cool. Definitely like the sculpt. I do love the Mando's helmet. Um, nice gun metal again. Again, I'm loving all the, the new colors with these these Mandalorians, as you can see our friend in the background there still holding his heavy blaster cannon. Let's take a look at some of the sculpting here. So we can actually move his belt aside and get a closer look at his chest plate. More damage, more best scar showing through. I'm hoping that they release a, another figure with um, or his new arm, which I'm 100% sure they will. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Very nice texturing on his cape. I wish it was soft goods though. I mean, it would have been a nice touch. It would have been a nice touch. Black series, let's do it. So we appear to actually have a holster here. Now, let's see if that works. Huh. It does. Okay. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, I love it when figures have, you know, the appropriate storage for their weapons on themselves. So we can holster his blaster. Very cool. So that's an immediate win to this figure. So I'm guessing this little indentation on the back. So we can holster up our rifle but that does not seem deep enough I mean it works pushes his cape out a bit makes him look weird from the front so going back to our friend Mando so we've got some nice head rotation there can't complain um, really like that black paint. Very cool. Nice sculpting again on his van braces. Sorry for not saying that on the last one. I literally just remembered. So in one of them, he has flamethrower. I'm not sure which one that is at this present moment, but I believe it is this one. Yeah, so he'll go ahead and just burn your ass up with his flamethrower here. So 
let's get on to the articulation so we have again some soft armor up the top here oh shit i just broke that <laughs> okay cool it's not that soft don't do what i did um but you can if you really force it get the shoulder out like that you've got some elbow movement you can't get that up so it's not double jointed and that's again for the other side very stiff very stiff joints that seems to have popped out on me poor mando his elbow is not looking too good there not entirely sure what's going on with that no is it the same on this side no it's not that's just odd it's just very odd yeah oh, it's just an extra bit of plastic okay cool and Yeah, that's odd. That's super odd. Not entirely sure what's going on with my Mando figure there, but uh, yeah, that's that's just a, an issue. I'm liking the colors on his shoulder armor and a nice little detail on the belt with his disintegrating rounds stuff on there. He's got some more shells down there. He's got some more stuff down there. I don't know what these do. I love the detail. The fact that they've gone ahead and put that on the back as well. That's that's pretty cool. I like that. We've got some more damage and weathering there. Loving the colors that they're using. Some more damage and weathering as you move down. You see the little knee pads. This is very cool. Very intricate. I like that. This is also very cool. This is a double jointed knee. So you can make him do this. I don't know why, but that's what I did. Got some more ammunition, I believe, down there, or maybe some health packs, stems. Um, let's just get these guys side by side so you can see the size difference. And yeah, and that's a that's a bulky boy right there. Yeah, that heavy Mando is a big guy. If we just get his legs in, yeah, you can see the size difference is noticeable. This guy would take a lot of Beskar. His head's huge as well. But you know what? Who do you think would win in a fight between the Mandalorian and the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian? You know what? Let me know in the comments what you think because I, I'll be honest. I think my money would be on all Heavy Mando because our guy doesn't even have a jetpack yet. But guys, hope you liked this quick review. Well, it's not quick. This was a long-ass review of these three Mandalorian figures that I have. As soon as I get more, I will... Do an updated video. I'm gonna try and pick up IG-11 because I feel stupid for not having them. Um, probably gonna do a video on all the stuff I picked up over Black Friday. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch up with you soon. Peace.